Hello and welcome to NDTV Profit. I'm Vikash Srivastav. We have with us Mr. Bikesh Ogra, MD and CEO of Jackson Green, to talk to us about their agreement with NTPC to set up their new green transition facility at their Chhattisgarh plant and their future corporate plans. Welcome to NDTV Profit, Mr. Ogra. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, thanks a lot. And I think before I speak about the agreement uh, on this particular project, I think it's important to get a view on the profile of this project. So this yeah, project that's what is... I would uh, like to start with. Like, you know, if you can explain our viewers the green transition agreement with NTPC and also how would it help Jackson Green? You know? No, so this project is a, is a project which will uh, give an output of 4G ethanol. And this is uh, first of its kind in the world, which is done on a power plant. So as you rightly mentioned, it is done in Chhattisgarh power plant of NTPC. Uh, and NTPC Netra has been instrumental in really, you know, guiding this whole project. And the reason for us, I think, uh, to be associated on this project is uh, that uh, we are uh, actually getting an access uh, to multiple technologies, which are again transformative in its nature. Uh, we are uh, getting associated with the carbon clean technology. Uh, we are getting associated with the uh, microbial, advanced microbial technology, uh, which is not available globally with more than two or three players, and then also the electrolyzer technology. So this gives an access and a partnership uh, to uh, all of these technologies. I think what we also want to uh, highlight is that ethanol uh, has a product is a feedstock for uh, the sustainable aviation fuel going forward. And we want to be the pioneers in establishing, you know, these kind of projects so that it helps us be ahead of the curve as and when the utility scale uh, project comes into being. This is a uh, right now a small project, a pilot project, uh, which is initiated by NTPC. And we are their build and operating partners uh, and uh, the installation partners. We do the complete engineering. We stitch together the complete technologies and the output product comes as ethanol. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, the uh, supplementary question would be like, you know, what is the business model and how would it benefit, uh, say, for an EPC contractor like you? So for us, I think, uh, like, this is a 10 tons per day of, uh, you know, ethanol that is getting produced here. I think for us, uh, the whole uh, trigger and the whole, uh, I think, theme is to get a view of the technology how it shapes up uh, for a small scale uh, project, which is a pilot uh, project. And then our model would be to then get into a hundred tons per day or 150 tons per day of a project, which we may develop on our own and start supplying the 4G ethanol for various uh, needs, which is including, uh, you know, uh, alignment of, uh, you know, ethanol blending program uh, for 20% by 2025. And besides of that, uh, getting into the chemical industries, by using its, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, affiliates as uh, eth ethylene, ethylene acetate or ethylene lactate, which helps in the chemical industry for packaging and stuff like that. So we are wanting to take this as a test bed for us in order to really take it to a scale uh, as and when we reach a parity on the pricing uh, or close to parity on the pricing by getting into a much larger scale, uh, you know, in the near future. So, uh, would you like to discuss a little bit or uh, more detail you know, in terms of pricing for these products, especially for green hydrogen and also for carbon capture? And right. does it really make commercial sense for you to start your own similar projects? See, at this scale, it will not make uh, commercial sense for the moment. For sure, uh, it is not making a commercial sense. This is just to get a hang of the part, part, you know, technology which is mixing together the carbon uh, capture, which is done from the flue gases, then uh, hydrogen, which is produced from electrolyzers, and uh, uh, obviously the uh, this uh, technology uh, from US, which gives you the uh, ethanol synthesis. So all of these put together is something which will not make any commercial sense now. As we move forward and as we take the scale from 10 tons per day to maybe 150 tons per day, there will be a reduction in the, in the economic value of the ethanol produced through conventional means and the ethanol, which is the 4G ethanol produced through this means. So we see that, uh, you know, parity coming in in probably year, year and a half time. By the time we should be ready to really take on the mass scale adoption of that particular technology. And that's where I think this project association for us is very critical and implementation also. Yeah, two questions here. One on, uh, like, you know, you said uh, before you reach 150 tons per day kind of 
target. So that you plan to do for NTPC itself, or you have your own projects where you're trying to work up so to that kind of. There are, there are various there are various avenues and opportunities available. Like uh, like I said, that we are uh, the technology partners uh, for uh, this technology, and there's one more technology whom we're talking about and this projects which we are talking are uh, uh, you know being spoken with ntpc also plus there are some private uh, you know institutes whom we are having discussions now but they will start rolling out uh, you know these projects maybe 9 to 12 months down the line but we will have to be ready for those uh, you know deployments uh, by really understanding the technology fully on this particular project Okay, and what are the kind of investments uh, that uh, you know Jackson would have to cough up for uh, a EPC project like this? So Jackson basically uh, works, like I said, on a on a design build, you know, implementation and engineering uh, perspective. The total project size is around two fifty to three hundred crores. That is for this ten TPD. Now, when if you scale it to a much higher square going forward, the project sizes would become much substantially larger you know, to the tune of around 2,000 uh, odd crores. But this project is between 250 to 300 crores. Okay. And uh, uh, somewhere I was reading that Jackson is also planning to uh, scale up this uh, and some six more projects is what you all are working on for your 10x strategy that, you know, the company is talking about. Can you tell uh, yeah. our viewers a little bit about that? So I think uh, at Jackson Green, we are, uh, like I said, pioneering these, uh, you know, innovative and transformative projects, uh, you know, across, uh, you know, the sectors. Like we are working on a similar type of a, a carbon capture plus electrolyzer uh, based project in one of the other thermal power plants of NTPC. And there we are producing methanol uh, through a methanol uh, reactor. Uh, that is under advanced stages of commissioning that should get commissioned uh, in the next, uh, you know, one month, 45 days. So we should have the first, uh, you know, 4G, world's first 4G uh, uh, methanol plant uh, being commissioned, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the next month. That's one project. The second project that we're doing is uh, uh, we are we're actually doing a world's first production and uh, dispensation hydrogen plant, uh, you know, again with NTPC, partnership with NTPC. We're dispensing hydrogen at a 500 bar pressure, and that will be ready for commissioning by year end this year end <clears throat> the third project that we are doing is for a refinery that is producing hydrogen and blending it with their existing hydrogen network uh, we are also doing a project uh, with a steel plant again producing hydrogen for the blend of hydrogen in their existing network so these are some of the very innovative projects and if you look at the total cumulative capacity of the electrolyzers that we are using for this is around 15.5 uh, megawatt which is amongst the largest in the country today and uh, you know we're very very happy that we're covering all almost all the sectors uh, in this uh, com complete uh, energy transition themes so all put together how much uh, hydrogen uh, would jackson be producing say once all these projects so, are ready in a year's projects time? are all installed cumulatively uh, put together hydrogen and this derivative which is methanol ethanol and uh, you know uh, the other stuff we would be producing cumulatively around 8500 tons per annum which is again a very very large scale given given the sizes of projects that are happening at this uh, juncture. And in megawatt terms, that would be how much? I told you in the electrolyzer megawatt terms, it's around 15.5 megawatts. Okay, okay. And uh, total all put together, what's the kind of investments uh, you are putting it into all these projects, the derivatives so, including? Uh, so the total investment would be uh, approximately 700 order crores. 700 crores. Okay, tell us a little bit more about your renewable energy projects. You know, talk about solar, talk about wind and green transition. You already spoke about wind, sorry, you already spoke about hydrogen and methanol. What about your renewable energy projects? Yeah, I think uh, we are amongst the leading renew renewable energy solar EPC providers in the country today. I think uh, we have uh, a pipeline of around four and a half gigawatts that is being constructed and under construction. So this is uh, this is a buildup of over the last one and a half years of our existence. Besides of doing the solar EPC, we also have another one gigawatt of uh, solar assets that we are developing uh, on our own, and they should be ready uh, for construction and commissioning by twenty year twenty twenty five end. 
we, wherein uh, we should be connecting it to the grid. That is our own assets. Besides, our uh, our aspiration is to build in a gigawatt of assets as a developmental uh, asset on our own every year till about 2027. And uh, you know, build, obviously, there are there are partnerships that we are looking at building these uh, projects as. And uh, we are also talking in advanced terms with a lot of uh, the guys as equity participants who will be working with us and partnering with us in building these projects. So this would require an investment of how much since you're also looking at equity partners? So for the first set of projects would require an investment of uh, around 3,500 crores debt and equity put together. And uh, the debt uh, portion would be around uh, 75 percent, and 25 percent would be the equity. So we're look looking at equity partnerships on this set, first set of projects, as well as uh, the forthcoming projects, wherein we have got uh, you know framework uh, commitments for uh, three gigawatts of projects uh, in partnership mode, equity okay. partnership mode. Okay. So is the solar manufacturing also part of uh, Jackson Green, or that separately? That, that is a part of Jackson Group, uh, but we work very closely with the solar module manufacturing team of ours, but that doesn't form under the umbrella of Jackson Green. Okay. And what are your plans to unlock value for uh, no green business? Are you looking at uh, listing or going to exchanges anytime soon? Uh, I think uh, that is a discussion that is currently ongoing between uh, you know us as to what will be the right time to hit a liquidity event, whether getting in a private equity on the hold co or getting into a public market. So I think uh, we have we have given ourselves a window of around uh, 24 months in which we should uh, try and target to get to any liquidity event, either, either private or public. Okay. And uh, one last question, basically on, you know, since the new government is not there at the center, so what are your expectations from this government and also uh, if you can talk a little bit about the power sector as such, you know. No, I think m more specifically on the power sector because I think the work that has been done uh, in the past by the government has been really commendable, you know, really appreciated the way the thrust and momentum has been given on the green energy fuels. You know, and uh, looking at from a global lens also, I see India as one of the most promising countries who have given a thrust, uh, you know, to these kind of energy transition, you know, themes. I think our expectation from the government uh, would primarily be, be see, uh, there are four or five, uh, in my mind, uh, four or five expectations that I would really, uh, you know, look forward to in terms of, uh, you know, what the government should uh, uh, look with renewed vigor. I think number one is to create a robust, uh, robust demand and an offtake agreement. I think that helps immensely. I'm talking about the green molecules, the green uh, fuels. I think uh, if you create a good and robust demand and uh, a good amount of uh, offtake and agreements, which will help bring in investment, not only for dom domestic uh, players, but also for international players. And case in point being the recent, uh, you know, green ammonia bid that has been rolled out which is for the fertilizer plants. There's a 10-year uh, offtake uh, that has been you know, given in the contract or the tender. And there's one more uh, wherein the steel plants have also uh, rolled out uh, tender for a 10-year takeoff for uh, hydrogen. Now, my point uh, and uh, ask would be that instead of 10-year, what will make it more investable is if you can increase the contract demand for, say, 15 or 20 years, that makes it much more investable rather than keeping it restricted to 10 years. That's that's one. I think investments uh, on R&D, I think uh, that is critical. That has been happening in the past. Like this is this project that we are talking just now about, the, uh, the 4G ethanol project is an R&D project. But I think an enhanced support on the R&D would also immensely help uh, really accelerate uh, this transition uh, of energy uh, themes. I think on the infrastructure development, I think we are facing challenges, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the connectivity, the grid, and uh, the availability of lands. I think if there can be some, you know, a different view around how to really fast track those, uh, you know, infrastructure development also, that helps obviously fast track the growth of renewables as well as the growth of uh, green fuels. I think mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on, the, on the other front, I think if there can be more flexible approach towards private and public partnerships that will also really help uh, you know us to really get into our partnerships with 
uh, people like steel plants or refineries or oil and gas companies and help uh, transition, uh, you know, accelerate their transition themes. Okay, I think what's your, what's your sorry? views on bringing electricity under GST? Yeah, I think that that will definitely help, uh, you know, bring in efficiencies, at least from an IPP perspective, that, uh, you know, we will we will have, uh, you know, much more better, maybe, uh, you know, outlook towards the tariffs and, uh, you know, the way people bid for the projects. Okay, okay. Another, another couple of points which mm -hmm. I would expect that, you know, there is there is some thrust around that is on the, on the an institutionalized view on the skill development. You know, you're talking about really, you know, gathering momentum on these green fuels and green molecules. I think there is a definite gap between the skill availability of, uh, you know, the people uh, available and uh, needed. So if there can be an institutionalized approach towards bringing in that skill development program, that will also help uh, immensely, you know, deployment of uh, this, uh, these uh, vehicles. I think other point is obviously the regulation and standards. I think we need to have some consistencies around the regulation standards codes, which are in consistency with the codes that are there in uh, you know, other parts of the world which helps us, uh, you know, really increase our export uh, capabilities. Because I clearly see that uh, India, if it uh, is given some incentives on the exports part of it, can become a clear global export hub. And uh, for that reason, we need to bring in those uh, consistencies around regulation standards and codes. Yeah. Thank you very much for talking to NDTV Profit, sir. That was great talking to you. It was very Thank insightful you. also talking to you as well. Thanks a lot.